Hopefully you enjoy. Right. Yo, what up, everybody? Planet X Films Paradigm Review Show. This is the Risen Story of Sharon Smith documentary review. Uh, 2020, it just dropped the other day. Full-length documentary. What day did it drop exactly, boys? I believe that was the 9th uh, this Wednesday. Let me just see. I think it was good. Or the 11th. Either way, it just dropped this this week, so you guys can check it out now on uh, Amazon Prime. This is the documentary of uh, Wu Tang Sons of Man member Hellraiser. That's actually who Sharon Smith is. If you guys are unfamiliar, didn't know his real name, or haven't figured it out yet, um, quick plug for his merch: HellraiserOnline.com. Make sure you head over to diamonds with a Z O C.com. That's where all the Hellraiser merch is. And you can get a fly camo hoodie and be like me or don't get this one. Cause you can't be like me, but buy everything else there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much where we're at today. If you make sure you tune in, like subs and share the rest of the uh, documentaries we did the last one. Well, the first one and last video that we made was me and Mac on of Mike's and Ben uh, Wu-Tang Clan documentary, four part series on Showtime. So now we're back with the Sons of Man editions, the spiritual sequel to the last episode. And we have Gaz from Ancient Visions, AK Mosh Punk with us. Uh, so set them off boys, let everybody know what's popping and how you feel and drop your links, starting with Mac. All right, um, yeah, Instagram and Twitter is Mac the Rebel PXR. Uh, check out all the updates on there. Um, I have reviewed this uh, documentary very well, and I, I have to say, like, this is like it, it's pretty much um, like I said, like like an additional story to like let's say if uh if Wu Tang Mike and Men had like an additional like chapter, you know what I mean, and it had to like speak on like the outside family of the Wu Tang Clan. And especially, you know, one in particular, you know, Sons of Man and Hellraiser. And I would say, like, this is definitely one of those, like, um, this is definitely one of those, like, uh, features I, I think people should see. Uh, it's definitely something that's, uh, you know, I think well told. Um, his story uh, was such a struggle, uh, pretty much um, even to the hardest times of, um, to where he's going through right now and such, you know what I mean? God, uh, shout out to Hellraiser, by the way, Heaven Razor, you know what I mean? Uh, GGO, thing, you know, shoot, wings up, of course. And, you know, the brother's story is, like, to me, one of the most strongest, you know, struggles I ever heard of, you know, and I have to say, you know what I mean? This is definitely, like, one of those, like, stories that, like, I would say definitely inspires and definitely, like, uh, shows the strength of like uh, a human being that with such like remarkable talents, you know what I mean? Had undergo like such like faults, but at the end of the day, you know, still came out strong and still is on the road to becoming, you know, back to 100% to where he needs to be, you know, in God form, you know what I mean? So yeah, man, I mean, definitely gives a lot, a, a lot of insight uh, on a lot of, uh, on a lot of history and, uh, a lot of things that he's been through so for sure yeah yeah no doubt um yo what up y'all um you can follow me on twitter at gaz wanderer and my site moshner.blogspot.com where i post everything planet x media related including paradigm reviews and episodes of ancient visions and shout out to hellraiser heaven raiser as well um yeah, just to, to echo what, what Max said, and I, I said this to you both earlier uh, when we were talking. Um, it's not often I watch something and I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to process, process my thoughts, get my words together. Um, for the first half of, of the film, you know, centers around, um, you know, Razor's music, history of Sons of Man, etc. And then the yeah. second part is, you know, about his struggle and where he is now. And um, again, another another comment I said off uh, to to you both was, this this is a story that will appeal to to everybody. Um, like as Max said about the human spirit, you don't have to be a fan of hip hop for this. Yeah. Um, or even really, music at all. Yeah, or even music. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's it's really raw. It, it's really yeah. it's 
it, it's really it, it, genuine. Nothing is hidden. Everything is there, right. and it's if if it doesn't affect you in some way and and inspire you and move you as well, um, that you know, there's, there's then you, you lack a soul um, because seeing what Razor went through and that's and that struggle is just um, you know it's. Uh, yeah, I, I want to try and articulate myself and say some words to do it justice, but I, I can't really. Um, uh, well, I might be sounding cliche there, I suppose. I mean, I, th- I think that's why we're here. We're here today yeah. is to try to yeah. try to find the way to <laughs> to yeah, see if we can do that, yeah. come up with yeah. that. I mean, we've never really covered a topic probably as this serious yeah. or this emotional. Like most of a lot of this, almost all the other than like what me and Mac were talking about last episode of like. Wu Tang Clan like arguing with each other over money. I mean, that, and at the end of the yeah. day, that was just business. So, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's you know, it's serious, but it's I don't think yeah. it's as serious as like a person's yeah. health. So, yeah. mostly what you guys are used to us talking about are action, kung fu, yeah. <laughs> you know, even body, just like a comedy. That was like one of the yeah, you know yeah. I mean? So it's like this is a totally uh, different yeah. different realm for us. Um, you know what I mean? This ain't gonna be like our usual selves of like joking around in our personalities. Yeah. When, like people are used to it. What I would say about it is this, like I, now that you guys have seen the film, I think you could probably get a better reason why, like Gaz, how many live streams have you been on with me or in, in past interviews that we've done with Razo where people want to come on and ask me a bunch of personal questions about his health. But like you notice, like I just don't answer like 90% of them or I'm like, Hey, if, you know, if we have Ray's on, if he starts talking about yeah. it, like I'll, I'll let, I'll let it come from him because, um, I guess the way that I would say it is I don't, and I said this to Gaz and probably Mac too before, like I don't really feel comfortable speaking on another man's health situation. Yeah. I mean, just cause I know him or whatever, we did music together and like we're friends, like it still doesn't put me in a posi- position yeah. of like, I'm going to answer these very personal questions for this person. And I'm not really sure why that is such a big uh, question that the fans have. I get it. I understand like, this, if you're a hip hop fan, this doesn't happen to most of your favorite guys. Or if you did hear someone like it uh, got shot like a few times, like it has happened to a lot of rappers. And then like, uh, you know, when they come back out of it, everybody salutes them like, oh, man, you know, he survived. We got him back. And like a lot of people think that's super gangsta if someone got shot or went to jail or whatever. But you don't actually see them in the hospital plugged into a bunch of machines helping them. You know what I mean? Stuff oh, like that. Yeah. So you don't ever really see that personal side. And it's like, you might not think it's so gangster if, you, if you're if you their family yeah. and you got to be there with them. So, you know, it's like a lot of stuff gets glorified. And uh, I think that's what they did of like so well here is showing you that re- raw, real, like Gaz was saying, human aspect of it. It's a lot of yeah. people have a tendency to build these guys up as celebrities and superhumans. And when you start to get a fan base and the kind of cult following that the Wu-Tang had with dudes getting the W tattooed on their face and stuff like that. It's like, it becomes this kind of pop culture phenomenon, you know what I mean? And at a certain level, you kind of, you start to, not for us that are kind of like involved in behind the scenes things, but for the fans that have been Mac and I, and even Gaz, we're, we're all hip hop fans too, at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, it's easy to, you know, some of these people get out of control with the, like the fanboy is the sucker worship yeah. these guys. And some people start to forget that at the end of the day, dude, this is a person that has to go back to their family. And that's like, you know, um, I didn't know anything about Ray's sister or, you know what I mean? So all that, all that stuff you get to see of, of, his, of his personal family is like, you know, a, a total deep dive. So did, just did you both, did you both think it was uh, well balanced? Cause I did with showing you that raw emotion, the history, the family, as you just mentioned, VX. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, it definitely was. Yeah. I definitely yeah. say, mm-hmm. I thought that definitely say it was well balanced. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Obviously, you know, like the struggle aspect of, you know, the story is just basically like uh, what will get to you the most, you know, obviously what he undergo right. and such, uh, obviously. Um, but I also get to show you like for ones that aren't familiar who Hellraiser is, who he was as a musician, as a rapper, you know, for sure. MC, you know yeah. what I mean, some man, Wu-Tang, how he got affiliated with them, how you know, he got the Sons of Man formed, you know what I mean? Yep, uh, yep. Uh, you know, the certain underwings they had to go through and struggles they had to go through in the music industry. Obviously, music industry BS, uh, you, you know, but uh, 
Yeah. You know, it's totally from their perspective, you know what I mean? Not to mention, uh, you know, how big they, they've gotten, you know what I mean? Or how big they could have gotten, you know? Yeah, They're like how big <laughs> everything got for sure. The brand. I mean, I think that's, again, I guess maybe we covered that a little bit, Mac, but we didn't really that much in the last episode of uh, the difference between Wu-Tang and other hip-hop groups or other record labels or hip-hop brands is Wu-Tang Clan goes from the most powerful rap group and biggest rap group of all time to like basically, you know, RZA had Wu-Tang records and that's where they signed Sons of Man and Killer Army. And then like, you know, like all RZA's understudy, he basically has like a production team equivalent to like what Dre kind of did with Aftermath with all these kind of similar sounding producers. And then you have all these like Wu-Tang sounding artists, you know, Killer Bees and stuff. So like I've never seen any anything go from a rap group to a conglomerate that way with a yeah. Wu-Tang management, Wu-Tang records, like all these other affiliated artists and that that's like kind of what uh, sets them apart. But let's let, let's let's dive into that and kind of like set it off. So like uh, for people who don't know about like Hellraiser and Sons of Man, you know what I'm saying? Um, the stuff that me and Mac do with Planet X Records, I'm affiliated with the GGO, which is the ghetto government officials, which is Hellraiser's crew. You know what I'm saying? Um, Hellraiser is artist from Red Hook, Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? He's a original artist from the group Sons of Man which is one of the first groups, I think, signed to uh, Wu-Tang Records, if not the first group. So um, what you have with these guys with, with Reza is them following his, his, uh, like his life story of him growing up in, in the Red Hook projects in Brooklyn is like he, he basically, you know, loses his parents at an early age and he's like in the streets. And I, I learned something in this documentary, Reza, uh, that you were like in the streets flipping and uh, that was like not very good, but I'm sure you learned that at an early point because you went pretty much straight into music, as a lot of people uh, did in, in in New York. Didn't have many options, which I'm guessing for what they showed us in the documentary, you didn't. But uh, I want to say shout out to Supreme and uh, everybody that was with Reza in the beginning. Um, like I did not know that Supreme was uh, was Reza's cousin. So Supreme is an early Hell Reza Sons of Ben uh, producer that did like a lot of their their early records. If we talk about um, the early proto Sons of Man projects, which is The Last Future, um, and that's, there was only like, I think two or three of the members in that, right? Is it, I think it's, is it Reza, uh, Priest, and Seventh Ambassador, or maybe Prodigal? There's like, there's only like I think three or four of them that are in that early crew, which, uh, you know, is before I mean, they even Sons of Man. I mean, if you're talking about The Last Future, I think it was yeah. just, I believe and then until you know, the rest joined up and it was a six man crew sons of man right right yeah or maybe it was 60 and raise a priest or something but anyway it was only like two or three of them and uh yeah so they did these uh early records where they had this like never before heard like spiritual style which like you know people who follow this this very i want to call it a sub genre but i don't I, I guess like a niche sub genre of hip-hop which is spiritual hip-hop which blew up about 10 or 15 years ago on the internet when every single kid was rapping about anunnaki and reptilians um using these kind of youtube search keywords for their bars uh that whole blueprint of that entire style goes back to reza and priest and what they were doing in, in sons of man, you know, uh, which like also shout out to like the lost children of Babylon, which is like the first uh, kind of offshoot of, of that, which is uh wrestle and cosmic and uh, out of Philly. Um, but, you know, before LCOB comes in the picture and stuff like that, like for the most part, sons of men uh, were the only ones doing that. I, I really like the part of how it showed how their style developed, uh, equivalently to the Wu-Tang Clan style in Staten Island and how they all linked up together in the studio because that was super interesting to see like RZA and them doing that uh, kind of Eastern philosophy, uh, you know, Kung Fu style that me and Mac were talking about last episode versus Sons of Man over here rapping about like, you know, Islam, 5% or Nation of Gods and Earths, so Black Hebrew, all that kind of like studying the good books, Torah and the Old Testament and stuff, everything that they were putting as far as the uh, biblical, biblical style. And um, that's basically what you have is the birth of spiritual hip hop uh, with, you know, what Reza and Priest are doing, Prodigal, 60 Second Assassin um, and these 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 sons of man uh, members. So how, how am I doing so far, guys? Mm. I doing well so far, I would say, sir. Um, 
No, I, I, I would agree on all that. Um, plus, um, uh, plus they come with like uh, the the the, uh, the terminology they use in their flows, also. You know, what I mean? yeah. That also, you know, what I'm saying? right, like, right, right. You can like like Old Testament biblical references, Judeo Christian, you know, yeah. And such so yeah you know what i mean like even that like sparked interest in like you know spirituality also yeah you know, you know, for you know, sure spirituality. yeah man and um yeah they, i i just like the you know <laughs> they were the first to just come with that whole you know style you know what I mean? oh hell yeah you gotta give you got that and so yeah man they, they definitely was it was they uh league of their own you ask me yeah so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was interest. It was interesting, like like you, like you both said, learning about that foundation where it started, where it begun, where it begun. Um, right, right. So yeah, I thought that was dope. Yeah, no, that was epic. Uh, I, I definitely want, before we leave that, I definitely want to say so. Anyone doing any sort of spiritual reference now in underground hip hop is basically like paying homage to Sons yeah. of Man. I mean, even what me and Mac do in Gorilla Alliance. You know, what I'm saying like that's like, you know, obviously if you have heard my music, like. A lot of people say, like, I sound like those guys, but, the, the, you know, Razor and Priest are two of my main influences. So it's not anything like I dodge around where I try to spit a verse of that style. And I'm like, I'm like, that was all me, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't listen to any like, it, it's obvious from how I rap that, that I listen to those guys, that, you know. And I don't, you know, I, I, it's with the influences thing, some people are about it. And some people, like, run from it. Like, yeah, that was all me, man. I, I listen to none of that stuff. But, I mean, the way me and Mac do it is, like, you know, we're pretty, we're pretty upfront about our, our influences. But, anyway, so, uh, yeah, so you uh, going into, like, uh, the business, um uh, of what of what these what Mac was saying and the boys were saying is um, uh, Red Ant Records. Well, also I want to say shout out to Prodigal of how he had all the vinyl, how they showed the hard copies of the original albums, like uh, the Last Shall Be First and like all the singles and stuff. Like how they had that man, like Prodigal that that made me want that vinyl so bad, man. I'm gonna see if I can track that thing down, but I'm sure I'm gonna be like going to like Antarctica trying to get decent copies of those that don't cost like $500, but it's all good. It would be my, my personal quest. Um, so they, uh, they, so they come on, I think it's, oh man. So I believe it was Wu Tang records. Um, they do the singles or the, uh, the, the, the 12 inch over there. And then I, I I'm not sure at what point they go, uh, they get the offer for red ant records. And, uh, yeah. So they, they go out to Cali to do the full album and stuff like that. And that's actually where the, uh, the director uh, Frank comes into the picture. He worked at uh, he worked at Red Ant, so he got involved in the project. And I think that's partly, if you watch his last interview, why he has all the footage of uh, Razor back in the day and them signing their original deal and them in the studio working on the original albums up until everything that they shot like of Razor now. And actually, like uh, shout out to Frank real quick. Like this this dude is a, a, a you know I think this kind of goes back to what me and Gaz said a lot with our old like cross genre uh, radio show that we used to do um, is like Frank is a dude who dabbles in film. He is in uh, like a punk rock band called the street walking cheetahs, old classic uh, West coast punk rock band. He has multiple metal and rock projects with all these other artists. And this is the guy who's the sons of band like publicists. So that's a perfectly good argument for me and Gaz to say like that kind of like punk rock experimental hip hop energy. You you can't just put us you can't put us in neat little compartments like this dude uh, is in a metal band. He he can't listen to hip hop yeah. and build. like this director is a perfect example of that. So exactly, and I thought like, when when it was showing you the foundation in history, um, you know, of Sons of Man, and like you said, we know know the the spirituality that they're spitting. Right. But it was delivered with that hardcore flow as well. So right. with me also being from a punk rock and metal background, that immediately made my ears perk up, gravitate. It's got the sound it tucked me in, and then you're yeah. hearing, yeah. and then you're hearing the knowledge what this what yeah. you're showing as well. I'm like, man, this sure. is this is mad fire because it's been delivered with a hardcore flow as well, which I know I've talked about for years. Whenever we've exactly brought this example up, so yeah, one hundred man. Yeah, well, it's the style and the energy, and yeah. Jazz is always the guy who says he's not going to listen to any hip hop that's like not not dark, gritty, gritty, grimy, and dark. Well, I don't. I think Sons of Man pretty much created gritty and grimy and dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't really get any darker than Sons of Man. Yeah. As if they're, they're like one notch above like horrorcore, but like 
Yeah. Even some of their stuff might be darker because once you go down those dark rabbit holes to Hades, that those guys are talking about in the freaking seventh circle of hell. You know what I mean? Well, there was the reference in the film where, where you know, somebody said, um, you know, you have like the the horror car with with grave diggers, and they're like, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's, that yes, I was going to get into that. Yeah, it was, was, but it was delivered with that yeah. same ferocity and finish where you're like, man, right, man, right. oh, listen right. to this, and. And, and, you know, hyper maniacs like me from that, I've got that punk and metal side as well, could happily mosh to that too. And yes, you can mosh to hip hop as, hip -hop as well. Don't yeah, who, I that. forget who who said Holy Core. Was that Prodigal? I'm trying to remember who, like, for anyway, whoever said that in the film, that's my new favorite term. Yeah. And I'm going to use that every single day now when I talk <laughs> about spiritual hip hop. I'm only going to say Holy Core. The, the, I, learned, I learned a new term from this film and I'm going to use that in my daily lexicon now. Yeah. Um, so going back to Red Ant Records, you have Sons of Man, you have Frank, and uh, all the boys. Um, you know, it kind of goes to, to what you guys were saying before of them being offered these multiple deals, them being these, these breakthrough, breakout artists, and, you know, what you get with, you know, you got these deals, you got a group, or you got to split it up, like, you know, four or five ways for, for the profits or whatever. Uh, Mac, I think this is coming up to me and your expertise of an individual that we have dealt with that we're going to have to address here today. Uh, this is the part where Reza talks about how the dudes on the street kept offering that record deal uh, at the shop and they were like, no, no, we're all good. And then Shabazz the Disciple goes back there with him and makes a deal for his own project. Oh, uh, yeah. Penalty Shabazz, man. Or penalty recording. Yeah, was. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, penalty, uh, penalty recordings, uh, which was Nori's also, uh, old label, so in case people yeah. don't know about that hip hop. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, this guy just, I don't know, decided to just sign off to, to get a, a, a record deal, you know, while Sons of Man was just trying to do their own thing, you know. And yeah, solo. Uh, just seemed like I, I guess he just wanted to go solo from there. I don't know. I guess he wanted something now, now, and you know, didn't want to like grow as a group first, you know. So yeah, whatever yeah. The case, and then you know, you know, for whatever reason, might not have been also, you know, it's whatever. You know, what I mean, the brother had his, he had his reasons, but um, you know, obviously, I thought it would have been better, you know, just to have sons of man, you know, all in one hole, you know, because they, you know, them working as a unit, you know, what I mean. You know, the energy, you know, grows, you know, and yeah. You know, and besides, I mean, Razor, though, you know, what I mean, in, in the group, I think, you know, was holding it all well enough anyway, just because he was the energy, you know, what I mean, he was the one yeah. that like yeah. had that had that flow, the consistent flow, you know, what I mean, going, you know, what I mean, within. Yeah, it. he was punching. He was yeah. So basically, um, you know, what I mean, yeah. For you know, besides just that, though, you know, what I mean, I think I was kind of like. I don't know, man. A little shady, I guess. Oh, no, it's very shady. Uh, Shabazz, I don't care what you think, so I'm going to – you said a bunch of annoying things throughout hip-hop history, so I'm going to just address you on camera. You have a <laughs> repeated history of jumping ship all the time, and I don't think it's a surprise that Sons of Man addressed you on camera this way because you, you constantly do this, and we're going to get back to you later yeah, when we do the duo. Yeah, when we get yeah, back yeah. to – yeah, yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be talking to this guy today because, honestly, I can't stand this guy. So yeah, anyway, yeah, he's, he's shady dude, man. He really is. Yeah, wow. yeah, he, he he's the worst. Bad, bad. You're the worst, Shabazz. Uh, so then, um, the, later on, you know, what I'm saying that. <laughs> how did you guys feel about that uh, that music video they did on the West Coast when they were whipping around the yachts and the <laughs> in the bay? <laughs> they were out in California, dude. That was one of the top moments of the whole film. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> Like priests driving around a speedboat in the <laughs> L.A. Harbor. <laughs> that's, that was great, man. I loved it. That's you know what? Yeah. Okay. 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 I, I, I was trying to remember what part what that was, and I'm like, oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's like that old music. But I guess that was the single. Yeah. Or so I don't, I don't think it was Shining Star, but it was maybe it was something else. But um, no, I wasn't. Yeah, because I've seen that video. Yeah, it's one of the other yeah. probably singles. Yeah. I mean, that, I think it says a lot that. Back then in the mid nineties, a group like Sons of Man, like we were saying, that's spitting this dark heart, holy core, hardcore kind of street philosophy can get a major deal. And then these guys are whipping around speedboats in the LA Harbor <laughs> in California. Like, dude, I missed the nineties, man. We do bring, bring back every 
spiritual hip hop holy court group and do that with all of them, dude. Like that, yeah. that's it, dude. The good old days are just man, they're yeah. just not the same. So, um, but yeah, so that you know, they do they do the debut album and stuff like that. So, I mean, like a, again, if you're new to Sons of Man, I mean, go go check out all the releases if you can find you know the singles on Spotify or whatever. Obviously, I assume the last shall be first and all the uh, all the albums are are on there, but uh, you're gonna want to go revisit this material. Um, you know, at, at some point as they follow the ups and downs of the industry, they ultimately get to um, splitting off to do the solo records, which is kind of what me and Mac were just alluding to right there. And then you have everybody kind of starting to drop these uh, like solo releases. So what would you guys think about that point? I think at that point right there, um, I think they just wanted to like uh, see how they stood as solo artists anyway, because I think they were strong. Right. Enough. Right. I mean, El Razor was obviously, you know, the one that was pushing the most. Uh, but uh, you know, I uh, you know, Peace Sun dropped something also, and then you had uh, uh, a sixty second. You know, I mean, you know, where he did um, I think he did a col- uh, collaboration after with um, with, El- with Razor. You know, a couple of joints also, along with Priest and all that. So, you know, I mean, Priest obviously, you know, what I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's the legend right there, you know. Priest, I mean? you must have like thirty solo albums, like uh, like despite like Psychic <laughs> World being insane. a double CD. I uh, Rasul just said you have another one coming, Priest. Dude's like, work effort, I, dude's work I, effort is insane, bro. Dude's I'm gonna text effort. Priest and ask him when he sleeps because I don't think that he does. <laughs> no, nobody can make that many solos, Priest. You're, he's not human. There's no way. He's he's, yeah. he's guaranteed a Nephilim from Mars because hey, nobody. Man, Pac was rap. able to do it somehow before he died to make all of the other solo releases but there's like three guys who could do it it's like pop priest and like maybe g-rap you know what i mean like like i mean other people make cds every day but they're not ones we want to hear and not ones we want to listen to so so what difference does it make if you make 10 albums a day if if i ain't gonna listen to it you know what i mean (laughs) making it consistent and making it good that is a completely different talent you know what i mean there's like like a handful of guys that could do that so Make Priest has a ton. good along with a record contract along with it, man. So for sure. for sure, sixty has some solos. Uh, Prodigal obviously has solos. A uh, shout out to Prodigal. I'm trying to do something with him real soon to do what I can to get him on the the music channel. Um, his album just dropped, The Spark. So check that out. Uh, probably you know follow Prodigal on uh, on on the gram and stuff like that. And Reza, you have a crap ton of solo albums too. You lunatic. And uh, he, mm-hmm. so like, just going going through real quick of like the amount of people who are in this documentary. RZA is in the documentary from Wu Tang Clan, also a film director, also works with Tarantino a lot. If you haven't heard of him, just g- go off my channel and unsubscribe and just don't watch anything, <laughs> or listen to anything that we do. You're on the wrong channel if you haven't heard of it. Uh, <laughs> Yo, Riz, um, Riz is in the, uh, is, is in the documentary also. I like this uh, this part. Yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah. And then uh, obviously R.A. the Rugged Man, Fred Rose Star, mm. Crooked Eye, mm. um, and everybody is pretty much saying raises fire from the point that they interview everybody else. And uh, Killer Priest is in it. Obviously, Prodigal. Yeah. We already said Sixties. Obviously, in it. You know, all the Sons of Man members. Um, pretty much from the point that like he's 14 years old and he's like the youngest guy in the group. Um, everyone is just saying his content is incredible and he's fire. So, I mean, like really like it's a, it's like if you're a Wu-Tang Clan head or a hip hop head and like you haven't necessarily gotten into raise stuff either through RA or through Wu-Tang or, you know, Crooked or like all the other people that he works with, you know what I'm saying? You, you might want to take a look and it might be worth starting with the earlier material or working your way up to his, his solo stuff. Like that's what I would do if you haven't heard any of it, but literally anything, if you start with Renaissance, Renaissance child, it's fire. If you start with uh heaven raiser, it's fire. Personally, or freedom, of, or, or freedom of speech with fourth disciple. Yeah. The fourth that's disciple stuff. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to fourth disciple. Uh, day of reckoning out now mastered by fourth disciple on our music channel, but that's for another day. Uh, so, mm-hmm. You know, he, he he drops Renaissance Child. I think that that had a DVD with it called The Razor Code. I, I it would have been a smart thing for me to go get my hard copies and bring them down so I could show them while I'm talking. But instead, just yeah. look at my fly ass GGO apparel hoodie. Um, 
So yeah, raises, raises ladder also. So yeah. Yeah, that one too is uh, Blue Sky Black Death. It, it's it's too bad those guys are defunct. Those guys were a great uh, production duo team. Um, awesome. So yeah, um, I don't know. Do you guys have any thoughts on either the solo albums or that uh, portion of the doc where they start start talking about his uh, solo releases? I mean, yeah, like uh, obviously, you know, I mean, when he came out with Renaissance, um, that was like. Well, Freedom of Speech was his first. That was like his like his very first one. That was like his more experimental stage, you know. Yeah. I mean? Until he came with like Renaissance, and Renaissance was like on some other shit, you know what I mean? Like he that that was like raised on his uh, in his purest form right there, you know. And then he evolved, you know, further and further, you know, what I mean? to like uh, the other uh, solo releases, even ones in where. Uh, I think the heaven to me that my favorite personal favorite was Heaven Razor. Yeah, my favorite Heaven Razor. Heaven Razor was definitely way, uh, definitely peaked on there. Um, but uh, yeah, man. I mean, obviously he released solos, you know, even after you know going through what he went through. Um, yeah, yeah know, I think they're mostly mixed mixtapes, but uh, yeah. But he had like a bunch of not, nah, but that's the thing. He had a bunch of recorded material that was like you know already ready to be mixed, but he didn't have nobody to mix it or such, you know what I'm saying? And, right. You know, luckily, you know, then, you know, he was able to find, you know, somebody, a DJ to mix it down and such, you know what I mean? Engineer that and, you know, definitely, man. The, the solos, you know, was definitely good. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I still got to peep a few more of them, though, man. But, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? I Raising, think I peep most of them. Razor's, like, work effort was, was, was you know, even, you know, even you know, in 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 the, in the point of his life, of where he's at, you know, he still keeps it moving, still keeps it going, still for sure, for sure, yeah. So, yeah, it, it was good. It, it was still good to see him go on and make music, especially um, you know when that when sadly the, that label folded, and I and I feel if it hadn't, like it said in the film, it could have gone on and been even, you know, bigger. Not that they weren't big. Yeah, that's a that's a um, good point. Uh, when that, when Red Ant folds yeah. at that time, there they basically, what was it? Uh, man, the, the article I think it was in the uh, Wall Street Journal or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It's basically yeah, based yeah. in the, the, the New York's uh, papers, and yeah. they basically I think they have Sons of Man <laughs> mentioned in the article, like which is insane yeah. to me. You know, what I, mean? like, I I gotta yeah. see if I could like track down a copy, like a hard copy of that for me. Yeah. <laughs> Look what I found, dude. But. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. pretty insane. So I guess part of the documentary kind of insinuates that Sons of Man could have went on to do a lot more and sell a lot more records probably if, yeah. uh, if Red Ant had it folded or had somebody else picked up the ball or whatever. So uh, that's a that's an interesting point to, to postulate upon because you have to wonder what the, the possibilities would be. And then did that contribute to the solos dropping like we were saying? So Yeah, yeah. yeah but... but um... I still thought it was a positive for, for all of them that they, they could go on and still create and release all of this music after that happened. Um, Definitely. Well, you're talking about some of the best rappers in yeah. the world, so it's yeah. not yeah. like when the group breaks up and it's, it's like, not like they're gonna what stop. are we? Yes, yeah, like the talent doesn't just <laughs> right, disappear because yeah. they're not in a, you know in a contract yeah. anymore. So yeah, I, I, mm-hmm. I agree. Um, so we have Reza dropping these like solo records, and this is where it gets to the more like somber part of uh, of the documentary, where it's like gonna go like more personally into his like personal life uh, than you know probably any other music documentary that you ever see. Before that, I'm gonna go in on, on my, my man Shabazz the Disciple real quick. Uh, as Reza's doing uh, these solo records, they start doing uh, Thug Angels with, with Reza and Baz. Uh, this project dropped on Baby Grand Records, and uh, it was like an EP, and they were kind of hinting at doing these full lengths and all this other stuff with Reza and Baz as this uh, kind of Sons of Man do it. Kind of like uh, the way, um, what do you call that, the Woo, the Woo Massacre Mac, when uh, Ghost and Ray and Meth split off of uh, Wu-Tang Clan, and they kind of have like their little sub subsection, sub-crew. You have, have like Reza and Baz as this like subsection uh, uh, kind of Sons of Man duo. And Razor's working on it. You know what I'm saying? He's working on it in the, in the studio. He's like living in PA. So he's driving like two, two and a half hours, like out to New York, getting baths every day, like in the studio and dropping him off in, in Brooklyn and the Bronx or wherever he was at. Um, while Razor's doing, working on the 
project at this time, they're working on the angels and demons, uh, mixtape, which I actually asked him about when we had him on our old audio show guys. And because the couple singles that dropped from it were absolute fire. So everybody, dude, it was like the, the nineties came back and the, the, the type of hardcore holy core that they were spitting was like ridiculous. And then as Ray's tells us on cam in the documentary, supposedly grave diggers attempts to return and, and Baz is going to be a member and he leaves in the middle of like recording and goes off and like basically does this tour. Doesn't even call Reza and, uh, and doesn't even like basically went to go do a tour behind his back and didn't even tell him that's the second time you jump ship Shabazz. This guy's obnoxious. You're, if, if there's a villain in the documentary, it's you Baz. Like, yeah, like I mean, that. to me, my I don't thing want to hear the guy man. explain himself. Yeah. My thing is this man, like, if you know if that's your man, you know what I'm saying you, you would say something, man. At least you know you would give right. some information of what's going on. Like if you're feeling some sort of way, you were or you feel like you need to do your own thing, and just let him know by, in, at the gate. You know what I mean? Like yo, I, I'm I'm trying to do my own thing. If, if I get the first opportunity, then I'm gonna just bounce. But you know I'm gonna let right. So then blah 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 blah. But he they, did not do that. They didn't even have that that that, that conversation. It seemed like nope. they didn't have that conversation. No, they didn't. Conference. They didn't. You know, so, I know for a so, fact they didn't. They didn't. So it's just like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, if you're just going to walk off and bounce and do whatever the fuck you want to do while you had obligations, you know what I mean, to, you know what I mean, somebody that you, you rock with since yeah. day one, you know what I mean? Yeah, you just walked out on, on a freaking recording deal when, uh, on, on, on a solo recording deal. That when, when, started. When, when your people's was like saying, "Yo, we good, you know, we fine, we we gonna go." Nah, yo, yeah, my I, thing is like the loyalty just didn't seem there. No, it didn't. I, it's because I, I didn't know what, what how to like define that whole relationship at the end of the day because it's like, yo, y'all might came from the same hood, but yo, y'all y'all, y'all acting like you know that guy play. is that guy's not looking good. He's looking shaky. Guys, you have anything? Hey, it, it's whatever, though, man. Like, uh. You know what I mean? Me and VX know the type of mofo we deal with. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's whatever. You know what I mean? Like, uh, he is where he is right now because of the moves he made. But Razor. Exactly. That dude's just too irrational, man. Yeah, you know, right. yeah, you know what I mean? It's, it's just like not even a bother at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. I don't even know why them, why them, uh, and West Coast, uh, cats, what they call themselves, uh, the, uh, the Dr. Zodiac. Cats and all that. Yeah, I'm mean, not even like fool with that dude in the first place. Seeing that, you know what I mean? Like you had cats like Priest, you got Ghosts, you know what I mean? The wolf, yeah, the wolf, you know? yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? But what, what are they in the mix? You know what I'm saying? What was this dude in the mix for? You know what I'm saying? Right. So he don't even deserve right. that opportunity. Right. He don't even know how to be loyal. You know what I mean? Like to, I to agree. To I agree. Obligate to something. You know what I mean? Unless it's something that that's for himself. That's what it is. It is what it is. I, I, well, yo, come on. well, fans, I don't well, have as much. Yeah, go ahead, guys. I was just going to say, fans, I don't have as much knowledge, and I'm not really, I can't really talk about it as, as, as with the same degree that you two can. But sadly, um, that that's in all music scenes, as we all know, because through our right. radio shows, we've we've dealt with with cats kind of doing similarish things in punk and in metal and yeah. like Max said, I think you know outside looking in I know say I know say we were doing something you know and, and I said to you both uh you'll hear something I've always wanted to do if uh if someone's going to come at me with a chance to do this I'm just letting you know I'm going to do it so I might not be able to do this with with you both anymore but I will try something like that there's, there's ways you can, so you can the, I think the point you're making is it's a simple conversation to have give the heads up up front yeah. About, yeah. about the business, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, a couple of, well, what I was going to say, interject real quick, because I want to get back on to Reza and his yeah. recovery, because it's kind of the point of this documentary, but yeah. a couple things real quick. That last show, when Reza spits that verse with Priest, like I was up there on stage with them, and uh, like obviously I was there, and uh, you know, it was like the Sons of Man reunion show, they called it. Priest was there, Reza was there, 60 was there, Yeah. It's kind of obvious who wasn't there, and I think that you know that that's for a reason. You know what I mean? Um, that know, also like being I said, bro. It's like I said, the brotherhood. It, yeah, it, it right. ain't dead, then. You know what I mean? It's like you you do you then. It ain't there. And uh, also, the Sons of Man uh, Rebirth album is on iTunes and 
Spotify and everywhere and take a listen to that album and just see who's missing from it. And I think that will answer all your questions there, but I'll say like priest is on it, raises on it, sixties on it, prodigals on it, you know, the four main members. So it says a lot if you ask me. So, uh, after he does heaven, raise my personal favorite album, cause it's absolutely fire. Check out heaven, raise on iTunes and Spotify. Um, yeah. you know, any record you can support helps out the cause. Um, Reza has, oh yeah, so, oh yeah, I want to go back to when dude went on tour and didn't tell Reza, and he was pissed, and he said he threw his phone. I've never seen Reza get mad in, in his life. I've never seen him, like, I've never seen him get a temper, like, I've literally never seen him get mad. Not that, like, I'm best friends with him and we hang out every day or something. Like, I'm sure he does, he's human, but I'm just saying, I've personally never seen him get mad. So, if he said he threw his phone when, when he called dude, because dude didn't tell him shit, and he got pissed, he must have been ripped. <laughs> you know I mean? that's, that's all I was thinking. I'm like, dude, I've like never seen this guy raise his voice before. Like, what the hell? Like, I couldn't even, it was hard for me to even picture him pissed off. Like, you know, he's not like me where I'm like, I stub my toe and like throw my TV <laughs> out the window. Like, I'm Sicilian, you know, like we're just two different kind of people. But uh, well, you got to understand, they said in the beginning, I think Supreme and them said like, you know, like he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a you know, a, a kind soul, you know, calm, calm yeah. soul. Exactly. Like, right. Yeah. That's, oh, right. It can't be messed with, you know? So yeah. Right. Know, yeah. yeah. He doesn't ever like, yeah. Like you said, like, he's just like, dude is Zen dude. Like, he's just like, dude, like his, yeah, his he's yeah. one of the most hardest people I've met probably, you know what I mean? So I'm just like, that's what I was kind of thinking when he said, like, I got pissed and shit. Uh, do you have something else? Yeah, that would have been saying that's the thing. That's a, that's a surprising thing right there. Cause obviously for you to get, for something to step out your zone like that, you know what I mean? It's really gotta be like something personal, something really piss you off. You know? I feel like that's how you know he was telling the truth. Cause if it was just exactly. like whatever, he, exactly. he wouldn't have said it. You know what I mean? So do you say it goes? Well, yeah. What to, yeah. Just to echo what you said, VX with having Welsh and Irish blood and Northern, will you two, will you two have seen me rant and heard me rant many times? Yeah. It's, it's just like As a, you guys it, seen me. <laughs> it's, a daily, yeah. it's a daily occurrence for me. Um, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> no, lots of colourful expletives come out of my mouth frequently. But anyway, right. um, what come across in the in the whole film to me, and I said this before we went live as well, is, is Razor's aura. I thought he had a really uh, gentle, calm, um, peaceful aura as well. Absolutely. Um, which made him really endearing, I thought. Yep, absolutely. I would agree. That's a perfect segue into like after his album drops, dude goes on tour and marks out. He gets pissed. Um, he's working with his brother and uh, he gets a really bad like headache. And like this is like the most like uh, details of like how this went down. Um, first of all, the editing on, on how they showed uh how his how he got his headache when he was working with his brother and stuff like that is like ridiculous and it had like those three D uh, those three D schematics of the brain and stuff like that with the with the generated uh, effects like shout out to Frank on the editing on that that was like absolutely insane I don't know if, if he had people helping him on the on the editing side but that was that was super detailed and uh, you know interesting uh, kind of uh, aspect of showing it um, he he gets his aneurysm and I mean, this is the you know the big thing that people like to ask me about like I'm I'm some sort of like health expert like guys I'm not a scientist in any way so if you ask me some sort of question like this I'm going to be looking it up on Google like the rest of us I don't know anything about this other than what they show you in the documentary so he gets a really bad headache um, and his, his brother's kind of like you know like sit down and chill type deal but he said it's kind of like the worst pain like he's like ever felt in like his life so his brother rushes him to like to the hospital and like this is basically if i'm not mistaken where the doctor saves his life because he catches the aneurysm basically on its way to like the core core of the brain and basically if it would have like popped his brain he, he he would have been done for so they basically caught it like mid you know mid aneurysm um and that's when they kind of do their uh, whatever kind of reverse, you know, recovery, uh, you know, very technical terms by me as usual uh, to, to kind of, you know, this is what basically saves his life for, for lack of better uh, term. And uh, so this is kind of the, the, the downfall of the, uh, uh, you know, if the, if sons of man getting signed as the peak, then this is kind of the, the downfall of the documentary of the downfall of his health when he um, gets this uh, aneurysm. So, um how, how did you guys feel about that once he goes to the hospital well let's just say this um 
by let's say of like like when we went to do that show out, out there in uh I think it was in Connecticut. When yeah. I first met uh when I first met him, uh I would have to say it it was her hurtful to see him like that, you know. Yeah. And, but at the same time, being able to talk with him and walk with him and all that, it was still like, you know, an honor, you know, because that's one of my favorite movies. Right. You know, right. Man. And, you know, um, as I was watching the documentary, it made me think of that thought right there, you know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. When we reached to that point right there, obviously, then, you know, it gave me an even more deeper understanding, you know, to, you know, where he was and now where he's at right now. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. Where he, where he's going to right now, you know what I mean? And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I would have to say it, it definitely was the saddest part, but it was also like something I wanted to see, like how deep can the pain be for you, you know, for you to rise up again and become, you know, the the you know the the strength of the God that you you know have to summon again you know what i mean once all but, for sure you know, for sure i mean i think that's the spirit of the documentary right there is what you just said you know what i'm saying exactly so like wouldn't, you know wouldn't I mean? be a story so, without that right so yeah exactly right. you know so it's definitely like one of the, the saddest aspects but it, it's also at the same time it's interesting you know, yeah the most in, impactful i would say impactful yeah. Yes, of course. You know. I mean, anybody could be a, hip, a music or a hip hop fanboy, which is easy for all of us. But I think this point is when you're seeing something different. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, man. I mean, I, I would say, you know, at that that part was definitely, you know, I think, uh, I think something that I think everyone would, you know, would have to see just to see how. Uh, you know, even like someone like Razor, you know, what I mean, can undergo such, you know, uh, struggles such as that. You know, what I mean, like, yeah, like, certainly like, humanizes him. Yeah. So, you got anything else, guys? Well, uh, just just what Max said. Um, it's very, very inspiring. I mean, it's it's very it's very raw. It's very real. Um, right. Nothing is hidden. It's all laid out there, and it really. It, it really does bring home that reality to you, but it's also Definitely. very, very positive and inspiring for someone to be able to come back from that. Absolutely. And, and like I said about his aura, um, you know, I noticed anyone who was interacting, interacting with him, you know, fellow musicians, doctors, everybody could feel that that brightness for him. Yeah, you know, definitely. Were all to talk, talk to him as well. So I think that's testament to the guy's character, to Reza's character. Um, it was, I thought it was very subtle, uh, very, very, very well handled, very subtle as well. Um, yeah. you know, it, it wasn't easy to watch, but I think they had to make it so raw and open. So people could, like you were saying earlier, VX, so people could see, Hey, he's not just a musician. This guy's a person as well. And look, this is what's happened. And yeah, it was when he showed you the reunion show, you know, in uh, for Sons of Man in Brooklyn, and everyone was yeah. there, and William Cooper was there as well, Nara the Rugged yeah. Man, and everybody. Hey, Swan, everybody was with us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and when when you saw him come out on stage, the reaction he got, and you know, Queen the Prophet, shout out to her as well, because I definitely one one thing that stood out to me, and it's funny, man, when he was saying, I think it was Reza was saying he, he prayed to me, um, a, a virtuous woman, um, yeah, someone you know, help him, him, yeah, and she's definitely very very special lady and you know and he's got something there and, and she's definitely sure. his rock and seeing that reaction from from her the you know the the people who were there fellow musicians um it, it, it really it really did get to you man uh, bro but you, when but, you were, but you were but you were happy to see that for him and he's back back there doing music you know? definitely like uh I, I like how they followed the whole recovery and then they culminated yeah. it with him him spitting that verse on stage. Yeah. Bro. Like, like, there's so many things I could tell you guys about that show. Like, man, like, when I left that day, dude, I left Boston. Like, I didn't eat. I, I, I was trying to get some food before the show. Like, I didn't even get to. I had my cat. Actually, check out that uh, Kill a Priest set because I have the whole set on the Planet X Records channel with with complete with Razor's verse and Priest's whole set. So uh, check, check that out. I'll, I'll tag the footage, right? 
bing there. Um, man, I, I was the one who started like the happy birthday Hellraiser chant because it like it was like right after it was like right after his his birthday and stuff like that. Like man, there was just so but when he spit that verse, dude, the crowd lost their crap, dude. They went nuts, dude. Like it's just there's so many moments that were epic, you know, from uh, like. William Cooper and Timbo King opening up to, you know, R.A. being there, dude. Like, I was I was sitting at the booth with, like, R.A. and Frank, dude. Like, I thought, like, I thought I was in Goodfellas, you know what I mean? Like, it was, like, one of, one of the, yeah. my favorite nights of my life, dude. It was just absolutely nuts. But, um, but yeah, yeah no, I was, Talking about that bar. No, 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 my God. At, at Black Bear Bar, when he's talking about when, uh, when Razor was on stage with, with Priest at Black Bear yeah, Bar at the yeah. end. When, yeah, at the venue. Oh, okay. so, like, okay. Yeah, because yeah, he, he was spitting... Um, He's from that verse to Tai Chi, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, dude, when I walked up, like, R.A. the rugged man was like out front taking pictures of people. Six is like my first time, like, seeing sixty in person. Like, just like the amount of like a, a whole like Wu Tang syndicate was there. Like, most of them that are in that that area, you know what I mean? And it was just like it was, it was awesome. I was just like, okay, I, I walk up and I see R.A. and I'm like, okay, I guess I'm at the like right spot, you know what I mean? So. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, I was just like, dude, that show was like one of the best shows I've ever been to. Like, that was my first Killer Priest show. There's, you know, it was just a lot of reasons why it was nuts. And it was all, it was also the Heavy Mental uh, 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 anniversary show. So he did like the whole set, the whole Heavy Mental set, like ridiculous. If if you're a fan of that album, which if you're watching this and you're a Sons of Man uh, Priest fan, then you are. Um, so yeah, so like it goes into like the whole situation of like you know his family finding out like about the aneurysm and like you know. Like everyone's reaction, his sister's reaction. Like I mean, it's just kind of. I think anybody who's ever had anything happen to a family member or anybody close to you should be able to relate to this because it's like you're talking to someone. Uh, you know, like they said, they talked to him a day or two ago, and then that happened. Like that that can happen to someone. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like it just kind of shows a and it, all of us. You know what I mean? That you know what I mean? This like our, our time is borrowed. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. So um, everyone's yeah, time is borrowed. Yeah, be nice, be nice to each other, y'all, and, exactly. and be positive and give out those positive vibes. And um, you know, there's definitely something, something spiritual as well. Um, definitely, cherish, some, cherish yeah. your family and, and yeah. give everyone their flowers while while they can yeah. smell them. You know what I mean? It's I think yeah. the moral moral of the story. So yeah, man, he, yeah. He, 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 their flowers while they're still breathing, man. I love exactly, it. exactly. So raise it goes down. He's out for like a year and uh, he wakes up and like he, he for what he for what they said, like on camera for what they asked him is like he did not even know what happened to him when like he saw his family crying and like he touched his head. And, you know, what I'm saying he felt that scar on the on the side of his brain for where they like operated on him. It's like I'm just wondering, like that has to be the most like ridiculous feeling to like be out for a year and wake up and like not know what happened to you until you feel your own scar from you know the operation of like your surgery you know what I mean like I'm just I was just trying to think to myself of like what would that feel like because I have no reference of you know what I mean I I get I get I get the common cold and I'm crying in my bed like a 12 year old girl you know what I mean so to go through something like that that actually matters is actually life and death you know what I mean? I think that's on a, I don't think that's just a thing that you can like, you can just uh, like relate to like, Oh yeah, no, I, I know how that would be. I, I would handle that fine. You know what I mean? It's like something you can't even wrap your head around. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, man. Then that's like one rough food awakening right there. Like, basically, for sure. to like, uh, you know what I mean? Just be there and, you know, obviously trying to, you know, one, you know, not even knowing like, you know, things have happened, you know what I mean? And what transpired, you know, you know, a couple of days after and such, but you know, you know, learning how to do all that stuff again, you know. Right. And we just eat, sleep, you know, I mean, walk, and such, you know, I mean, breathe. It's like you're there one minute and you're gone the next, basically, you know what I mean? It's like it's exactly. kind of, there's no transition, there's no get getting ready for it. No one's gonna come down and warn you, you know what I mean? Like it just comes out of out of nowhere type type stuff. And so I think he realized that that with that scar, I think he realized the seriousness of what might have happened then. Probably, yeah. How severe it might have been and you know what, you know, I think uh you know, it, it was right at that point. You know, what I mean, I think that something something had to like, you know, had to turn. Cause I know in the documentary he said like, you know, two or three times. You know, he wished he, you know, he was waiting for an angel. You know, the 
praying for you know praying for an angel to guide him at this point. You know what I mean? For sure. Guys came with the um with Queen the Prophet. You know, shout out to Queen the Prophet by the way. Yeah. Um, and she uh you know did her thing just to pretty much uh you know help him out. You know what I mean? Uh, was uh, I think the funniest uh part of the story was when she mentioned like um when he was there and such uh and spent time with her. He said like he's not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> like so don't you have to go home and he's like nah i don't <laughs> like, like, like what about uh, your god treatment said, he's like god said yeah. you were an angel i think god sent you as an angel la 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 and i yeah. like how that you know what i mean like basically if that was something something that came from him and all that you know and i, I could definitely believe it did and, uh, you know what i mean it was uh you know just like how we pretty much sees things basically you know at this point yeah for sure like now he sees it, things in a more spiritual aspect than just you know basic yeah. yeah yeah surface level like kind of physical relationships like his his quote is basically like yeah you know like when god sends you something like you don't you don't send it you know it's you don't you don't like walk away from it and turn your back and give it back to him <laughs> like, so, yeah I, I definitely say uh that was definitely one of the you know, there, there was some yeah. Another moment I thought was nice that gave us um, that made me smile was um, when he was living in the, the nobody showed you the footage from the new apartment he was living with Queen the Prophet and they had the pastor's sons helping him out you know cooking yeah. food and everything yeah, and yeah. So that raise has got like an endless belly loves eating well being somebody who is on a twenty four hour meal myself as well I'm constantly always eating and literally can eat anything um, that really made me smile as well but i thought that was nice to just to kind of you know give us a bit of that warmness because it, it's obviously we're in a very you know a sad part of the film um you know at this point so yeah, i thought that yeah. was nice yeah absolutely so yeah like going back into like his recovery and stuff so mm -hmm. like uh they pretty much have like all of his like physical therapy um chronicled on on yeah. here uh, of, of his recovery and stuff like that and uh yeah it's super interesting well one point that i want to make is like I have seen, you know, people making like posting comments and stuff like that and being like, oh man, there seems something different about Reza now. And da, 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 da. It's like, dude, somebody basically flatlined and came back to life. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's a, there's got to be something different about them. You know what I mean? Um, but of him when they're in the car and stuff, driving, driving back and forth, and he's like, I, you know, I don't want my fans to like feel seeing me and, and, and feel sorry for me. Like, I have a totally different take on it, but I think you guys should look at it differently that like seeing him come back from nothing, like just like he said in this like documentary of his recovery, like you gotta learn how to like walk again. You gotta learn how to talk again. And then like he said, like it's almost like Groundhog Day, like waking up every day and, and doing that, like tying your shoes or putting on your clothes. Like you said, washing your face, brushing your teeth, but not only doing it, then you gotta remember how to do it again for tomorrow. You know what I mean? So it's like, a, like, Going back from building block zero and starting from, you know what I mean? Starting from scratch type stuff. Just to um, get his memory, like, you know, kicking. You know, right, so exactly. Like that part when um, the doctor brings him that kind of uh, prosthetic uh, leg brace and stuff yeah. like that. And then he called the hospital and they said, like, he got fired because, yeah. you know, it's like basically helping people. Like, that was just, I mean, I think that's a good look at the American, like, health healthcare system right now. I think. The fact that this dropped right now and we're at like the peak of this this global pandemic of, of the coronavirus and there's this large discussion right now in the united states about like universal health care and, and ubi you know universal basic income and stuff like that you can't look at something like this and tell me that if we had medicare for all or we had universal health care in the united states of america that like something like this wouldn't have helped someone in, in that in that situation when that happens to them and you're a recording artist like he says in the movie and you know there's no kind of 401k or health insurance that's going to say if this happens to you while you're working on a record under contract the, that the label is going to pay all your medical bills so it's it's a it's part of a much much bigger discussion to have of these types of things happening to people you know like look what happened to his his mom like he was saying earlier on the film with cancer and stuff like that and he was saying she didn't smoke you know what i mean like a lot of that stuff me and mac have talked about the toxicity in, in new york city and in major cities you know 
for. Yeah, I'm glad that I like brought that like sort of issue into light also. I mean, even though it doesn't like explore too much though, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. it's just like kind of a mention in passing, but I think it's an overall theme that you could have about like like you're just, able to pick it up anyway, you, you, just by knowing, you know, okay, you know, like uh Razor couldn't like obviously like he couldn't like go to um you know, uh, one with that, you know, uh, doctor where you have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars for, you know, I mean, just for, right. Uh, well, that's right. That's the point I'm making. I would relate yeah. it to this current event of the coronavirus being someone right. who, who gets sick and can't work, uh, has to go to the doctor, like Mac was saying, maybe needs to get tested for either a virus or cancer. And it's the constant, okay, now you're not working. Now, but now you have to have a fee if you want to find out what's wrong with you. You know what I mean? It's just problem mm -hmm. after problem with this with this American healthcare system. So it's it's brutal. Um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, as Mac and the boys were saying, you know, uh, basically he's staying with Queen, and the house gets struck by lightning, so the building gets lit on fire. Like just just ridiculous. I'm like, what? Like I didn't even know about that. Some of that's you know this this part. I, I obviously yeah, didn't you know. I'm friends with him that I'm going to be an expert on his life story and know every waking minute of what happens to him. Like, I'm not going to get on camera and lie. I literally didn't know about this part until I saw the film. So, you know, that's pretty crazy. So that's why they move in with uh, Queen's, uh, I think, pastor or uh, whoever was with their church. And that was the part Gaz was referring to when they were living there and they were uh, going to service and they were, they were helping them out and stuff like that. But, like, you know, I think it's super impressive how, how it raises, like, recovery came along going from like, you know, like you said, he was in a, in a wheelchair to, you know, basically like not walking at all to him walking again. And then uh, the most interesting part of the recovery for me was uh, shout out to, you know, obviously his physical therapist and everybody that helped with the recovery goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, when she was uh, playing his songs for him and, uh, like like spit your verses you know what i mean to relearn yeah. his old verses as far as uh coming back to his uh speech therapy and that also kind of relates to what you guys were saying about uh him like getting back in the booth and recording again later on with the yeah, with the bunch yeah, of, yeah. You know? so but that was like man that was you know and i think it was oh man was it one of the doctors who was saying like as a as a high level recording artist like he already operates at a way higher you know, brain capacity as far as like lyrical ability. And they said that like, which most likely contributed to his recovery, which is, you know, that that's kind of the biggest moment right there for me as far as, far as the recovery, you know what I mean? Yeah, I man. I'm glad that, that, like, that. Uh, he was able to like, we listen to his old music and we spit his old verses just to get the, uh, yeah. Yeah. how he used to spit and flow back, you know, get that cycle, you know, back working, you know what I mean? As a, uh, you know, as you said, you know what I mean? Like, like, Hell yeah. You know? So yeah, man, it's, 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 I, def, I think that was one of the most inspiring fact, you know, points in the yeah. whole movie. I mean, documentaries too, yeah. Definitely. So, what do you think was, uh, what about you guys? What do you think was more, uh, one of the most inspiring moments in there? Um, All of it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, I would say. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like every it's second. Yeah, 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 one just, just thinking of one, he's just shedding a tail. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, got to run it back and watch it a few more times. <laughs> yeah. But the, the whole film and the fact that Rez is still making music, doing so much in music now, and he's still getting out there and, yeah. and doing it. That is the whole um, most insp inspiring thing going. It's like like I was saying, I was saying off air, and I think I said earlier as well. You don't even have to be a hip hop fan if you watch this film and you can't get inspired by it. I mean, all of us, um, you know, kind of dealt with dealt with tragedies in families or something like that. Um, right. So it just the whole. The whole journey back from from what Razor went through to where he is now, and that he's still going as well. That is the whole inspiration for me, all of it. Um, and super positive about it. I mean, yeah. I'm sure he yeah. has his moments, and how could you not go through yeah. that? But like, honestly, like he really never sh never shows it. Like, not not to me. Like, dude, like every time I leave that dude, I'm like running home to grab my notebook, like about to write like 500 bars. Cause I'm like, so inspired just to hanging out with him. And Max met him before Mac, Mac hung out with us. Uh, one, one moment I would just say, cause we were saying like most inspiring moment other than him relearning his own, own bars when he was like learning to 
talk again and rap again or whatever. Um, and then being like, yeah, if he could get back on stage and rap again. And then like Mac was saying, him spitting that Tai Chi verse at the Killer Priest Heavy Mental show, Sons of Man reunion show. Uh, probably that moment, <laughs> just because seeing the crowd, the crowd reaction, like when, like when he was up there, first of all, like just them seeing him, I already thought there was going to be a riot, you know, my first, you know, white boy from New Hampshire, my first Sons of Men show in, uh, in Brooklyn. Like, I'm like, dude, it's going to like, it's, it's going to pop off tonight. Like if there's going to be a riot. Like it's going to be these guys. And then he spits the verse and I'm like, that brought it up 10 times more. You know what I mean? So ridiculous. But, um, you actually, you Mac, saw every, they saw everyone trying to control the crowd, like chill, 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 chill. You know what I, mean? dude, <laughs> I thought the whole building was gonna get a fucking napalm, dude. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, if you remember back that day that he came to my battle, shout out to uh, uh, Google or YouTube, uh, VX for Sinister GGO versus GGO rap battle. Um, if you remember that night, Mac, he actually spit a verse for us, uh, after, after the battle. I'm not, I don't know if that was no, I think it was. I don't know if that was his Tai Chi verse, but the life in the science projects, I think he was spitting that one. No, uh, nah, that's, that, not, that, that's Priest. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think what he was spitting was yeah. uh, more of um, ah, yeah. man. Yeah, he did, he, did, he did spit a verse for us that night. Anyway, shout out to Reza. Um, that's, that's mostly what I have on this, guys. Uh, Risen, the story of Sharon Smith, directed by Frank Meyer. Um, check it out on Amazon Prime. I'm going to drop the trailers and uh, the Amazon link and all that stuff below in the description. I'm Ross G from PXF Paradigm Reviews. You can um, follow me there. Well, I was wondering, what, what was your rating on this one? Yeah, I was about to, I was about to just get to that. So uh, you can check this out on IMDB and drop them a rating. Make sure to drop them a rating on Amazon Prime as well. Currently, it has a 8.4, which I'm not sure what happened there. Some of you, uh, some of you fanboys might have might have hated on it a little bit, but that's okay. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's uh, I the next. They, yeah, I guess it uh, wasn't um, didn't hit him as, 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 as it should. That's okay. The next level of knowledge of health, self is not not for everybody. You know what I mean? If you're if you're if you're a sheep if you're a sheeple, it might have been a little bit too cra- <laughs> might have been a little bit too crown chakra for you. You know what I mean? If you I can't. think y'all eating too much of that microwave food, man. That's why y'all just didn't get it, man. Shit, sure, you know. drinking too much uh, chloride, a uh, fluoride infested uh, tap water. You know what I'm saying? You might have your pineal gland drinking, all uh, solidified. Drinking grape juice, thinking that's fabioso or something. <laughs> Freaking high fruit dose corn syrup diets you know what i mean you might not have understood the film but it's okay you know what i'm saying there's a lot of people like that in the united states of america uh i'm here I, as well yeah worldwide unfortunately yeah. i gave this film a 10 out of 10 because yeah, it's the greatest be, greatest be. documentary of all time there's my there's my first time showing my IMDb how, rating that's the proof how so, can it how can it be anything other than a 10 because <laughs> it's it's yeah. everything is there. It's real and raw. Yeah. So how can it not be a ten? How can you be yeah. like, well, I don't like that. You didn't yeah. give us enough information. You didn't show us enough. Yeah. I'm like, see, that's the thing, man. Bad. Like, I mean, if you thought it was gonna be a right, if you thought it was gonna be a Sons of Man documentary, which it isn't, but it basically is because it gives you the yeah. it gives you the whole Sons of Man documentary story. But there's it focuses on Ray's and it, like uh, there's. You know, it's more than to that story anyway. So, yeah. Exactly. I don't know. So, the 10 stays, you know what I mean? 10 on for all three of us. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know what ten. I mean? 30, 10, 10, 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 equals 30. 30, you know what I mean? Basically, is like triple the uh, sum of how epic this movie is. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a 30 out of 10. And another point. Is that, is that, <laughs> yeah. Another Another point, another point as well. Thinks I think it's an important one. Um, yeah. All throughout the, you know, the the film, the documentary, um, it was shown you, uh, Razor, both before and after. Um, yeah. Something I think that that every that everybody needs to learn is the humbleness. Remained humble. How many yeah. times have three of us encountered cats who, um, I don't know, it could be just like Fruity Loops MC and have like got the biggest rock star egos in the world and all three of us are like, man, the thing like the, you know, the, the Metallica or something crazy. Yeah, so, uh, go, going along with humble. that, how many times did Razor do our old radio show, guys? Yeah, most of them are yeah. on the chat. I think he came on five times, four, yeah. at least four, and, probably five times. We had and, scripture on two or three. Yeah, Judah, yeah. Judah as well. And yeah. 
they were all just mad humble, answered all our questions. We even got into yeah. chatting about movies, stuff like that. It was just yeah, like yeah. talking to your friends. It was yeah. Awesome. yeah. So that's, I mean, Mac, you know, I, obviously I, you know, check out uh, Throne of Blood um, on my album, Tablet of Destiny. If I'm not mistaken, that's Reza's first verse back after his, or at least one of it. Maybe it might be his first collab back. I mean, I can't, like I said, I don't sit with him all day long and you know what I mean? chronicle his life guys but uh i think that's his first collab back after after his recovery so it's actually on my album so uh, i will tag the music video bing there directed by uh origin animated by origin um and yeah i mean you know there's the guy i'm trying to get a interview with hellraiser for the music channel next friday around 7 p.m pst if everything goes well, we're in negotiations right now to figure out that schedule. That will be the second of my music, uh, my uh, music series interviews, uh, PXR interviews. Um, last one was Rasula Law from Lost Children of Babylon. I heard they have an album uh, coming out soon too, or a new album nice. coming out. Um, so yeah, I mean that's the, like as far as Gaz was saying with the, with the humbleness. I mean he came on our own radio show five times. Max met Razor with me. I, I got him on my album. You know I've done a few projects with him. Gaz has spoken to him, you know, on interviews and online, you know, several times. It's never been difficult to get a hold of dudes. I'm, I'm not saying blow up his email and his DMs right now because I'm sure he's pretty busy with this documentary just dropping, but I'm sure he is doing interviews as well. Um, if anybody needs his, his contact email for booking interviews, you can hit me up or I can actually put it below as well. And uh, yeah, I highly suggest everybody check out Risen, the story of Sharon yeah. Smith, directed by Frank Mayer. Check it out on Amazon Prime. Drop them a review there. It helps out. Um, I will have all the trailers and everything that we have related to this material linked throughout the cards and the end titles on this video. You got it, guys got any outros as far as where to find um, you guys or anything else? Any updates? Next wrap ups? Level, PXR, uh, that's Twitter and Instagram once more. Um, PlanetXRecords.net, you know, for yeah. any update. Man. Gorilla Alliance, that would be me and VX. You know, we'll be doing uh, Hobo with a Machete. So, uh, be Mix you know, CD. Mix CD. You know Coming soon. Day of crazy. Reckoning out now. Day of Reckoning. Yes, sir. So, yeah. Have it, catch it then. Cheer! Yeah, you can catch me on you can catch me on Twitter at Gaz Wanderer and site moshner.blogspot.com and Planet X Records, LLC.net post everything Planet X Media related on moshner.blogspot.com. Um, hit us up if you want us to do further film reviews on Paradigm Reviews. Um, they may be Netflix or rental releases at the moment with the coronavirus pretty much keeping us away from movie theatres. Uh, we've also got the Ancient Visions channel where we do lots of music interviews and random discussions and stuff on there as well. You can find us on youtube just subscribe via all the links that we'll put in at the end of the show just want to shout send a shout out to hellraiser and frank meyer as well um much love and thanks everybody for supporting today's show definitely go peep risen the story of cron hellraiser smith um seriously definitely go and peep it. it's on amazon prime as well you can rent it so there's lots of options out there. Trailers um, are on YouTube if you need yeah, to get yeah. a flavor of it. And uh, yeah, just be nice to each other, y'all, and uh, peace and one love. Absolutely. Our next review is looking like Fight Club 2. That's going to be a special graphic novel edition with me and Mac. We are going to get to the Bloodshot review whenever we do make it outside of our houses. And <laughs> we have a few other reviews as well. If there's other stuff you want us to review, it doesn't have to be hip hop related, doesn't have to be documentary related, drop comments with your feedback below. And uh, we do action, sci fi, kung fu, martial arts. We basically do every genre. So just take a look at some of the past reviews we've done on the channel and you shall see. That's it for this time. All right. Peace. Peace out, y'all. Paradigm reviews out. Best. One. <laughs>